the NASA ISRO synthetic aperture radar, the biggest collaboration between the two space agencies for what's arguably the most expensive Earth imaging satellite, is on its home stretch and is expected to be launched first quarter of 2024, according to a senior NASA official. Nisar is considered a game changer to help predict climatic events and is arguably the most expensive Earth imaging satellite. With a 12 meter antenna and solar panels, it will measure to a fraction of an inch changes on Earth's land and ice surface that in turn could potentially redefine inputs for predicting climatic events like let's say a glacial lake burst or even earthquakes and global warming. This is considered potentially a game changer in terms of getting inputs on predictions. The satellite will be launched on ISRO's uh, GSLV and the director of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, Laurie Leshin, says the two space agencies have had a fascinating collaboration, the biggest between the two. Laurie and a team from NASA are in Bengaluru for meetings with ISRO. And in this exclusive interview to me earlier in the day, she spoke out about what this collaboration means for NASA, ISRO, and also about how the world sees India's space prowess after the successful Chandrayaan mission. The NASA ISRO Synthetic Aperture Radar System is considered likely the single most expensive satellite in history. And uh, it's something that can measure down to a fraction of an inch the Earth's land and ice forms. Uh, something that could be extraordinary in predictions of climatic events as well. And joining me now is Laurie Leshin, uh, Director of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory of NASA. She's here in Bangalore. Thank you so much for speaking to us, ma'am. Uh, my first question to you is from a common man's point of view, or a common person's point of view, could you explain to us what this would mean for prediction of climate change events uh, and other events that we see in the world today? Yeah, understanding how the Earth's surface is changing is really important to understanding the impacts of climate change, also to understanding hazards like volcanoes and earthquakes. And NISAR will allow us, as you said, to observe with very uh, high precision small changes in that surface. And so everyone should care about melting ice sheets and changing forests and about earthquakes and volcanoes. And so it really will impact people's lives everywhere. And in terms of prediction of these events, this could possibly be dynamic in terms of how we go about this, right? Yes. I mean, that's the hope. Absolutely. If we can really watch things changing, it, it, the main reason to do that is to understand the physics behind the change so that we can better predict in the future change that will be coming. What do you think it means to India, the US and humanity as a whole? We are so thrilled with the collaboration between NASA and Israel and NISAR. It is the biggest collaboration on a, something technological between our two nations and certainly the, the biggest collaboration in the history of space exploration between the US and India. I'm sure it's just the beginning of many more things to come, but you know, it's one thing to talk about it at a very high level, at leadership, talking about collaboration. But we have had 30 or 40 engineers at a time here in Bangalore working shoulder to shoulder with their Israel colleagues for over nine months. Mm -hmm. And it's those relationships, it's the collaboration that really makes a difference in the relationship between our two nations. Interesting that you say that. Is there a single biggest challenge that you all have faced so far, perhaps transporting the radar from? It was hard. Yeah. So we have, first of all, we had also uh, dozens and dozens of, of folks from Israel that spent time at JPL in California. Uh, went in the earlier phases of the mission, and then we have brought for final integration the uh, the radar here to be mated with the spacecraft. Just the transport from when we landed in Bangalore to the site where it's being integrated, that itself was challenging. But overall, the teams have just worked together spectacularly well. And in terms of timelines, is there something, we know that it's not before January 2024, right. but is there something concrete that you can share with us in terms of timelines or when we can expect this to be launched? We're expecting it to be launched in the first quarter of 2024. And what I would say is we will launch when we are ready. Um, once it's up in space, you can't go fix it. So we have to make sure that it's really working before we launch. Between now and then, uh, what would be the crucial uh, indicators one would wait for, one would have to watch out for? Right, so we have a, a very specific list of tests that we go through on the spacecraft. Um, we are busy putting all of the pieces together. So, for example, the solar panels that will power the spacecraft are not yet attached. We need to attach those. There's a big boom and reflector we need to attach. And then we need to do finish the 
full system level testing to make sure that it will survive launch and survive in the space environment. Hmm, interesting that you say that. I just want to know, given the, the scale of this collaboration and the first in this decade, I mean this century yes. uh, between the India and the US, uh, what's perhaps the key learnings for NASA from this exercise? I think that we are learning that there are many ways to be successful in space and we are learning from each other. I believe if you talk to our colleagues at ISRO, they would say they've learned from us and my colleagues say we have absolutely learned from India in how they do their work and that is good for everyone. Innovation loves new ideas coming together. And you know, uh, one of the things that we've been looking forward to as an Indian astronaut through NASA yeah. on space, so what would you, any, how soon would you expect Hopefully that? Hopefully soon, we hope it's coming soon. I know that this will be a focus in the future. My focus is on getting NICER launched and successful and, and really contributing to understanding uh, our home planet and how it's changing. But uh, human spaceflight from India in the future is, is such an exciting prospect. Okay, my last question to you is that there are lots of starry-eyed Indian kids who come to NASA. Uh, we've landed on the moon now. Yes. Uh, how does the world view both India and Israel after that? Oh my gosh, we are so impressed with Chandrayaan-3 and the future plans for Indian space exploration. And we look forward to having many, many more partnerships between NASA and ISRO and, and the respect for India's space program. It was already high because India has accomplished so much in space, but now it's off the charts. Okay, thank you so much, Laurie Leshen, for speaking to us. That was Laurie Leshen, Director of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory at NASA there, here in Bengaluru now for that NISAR project. And India is off the charts, uh, says the director of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory there in NASA. Joining me now is Pallav Bagla, who visited the Jet Propulsion Laboratory recently and who has tracked NISAR and every other event in Indian space and science very closely. Thanks very much, Pallav, for being with us. Uh, just explain to us the importance and significance of NASA. And as a nuanced uh, science journalist, what do you make out of what Laurie said, what, what we heard from Laurie just a short while ago? Well, I am not surprised that uh, Laurie from the director of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory says that their respect for ISRO is now off the charts. The world is looking at India very differently. And especially NASA is looking at India very differently. Uh, not just with NISA, which is a very, very important satellite, not just for India, but for the world. But going forward, if America has to land and have sustained presence on the moon and then on Mars, and India having signed the Artemis Accords, partnership between India and America would be very helpful for the world for having human presence on moon and Mars. So it's, it's a very, very crucial step. But NISAR as a satellite is one of a kind. The world has not seen a satellite of this kind, not just because it is the single most expensive Earth imaging civilian satellite at costing $1.5 billion, but the two S-band and L-band radars working in unison is going to give data on climate change and Earth deformation like never before. The data is going to be shared by India and America, but also simultaneously by world scientists. So, so it, the global scientific community is looking forward to this particular satellite. And let me add one more small thing, which will be of interest to you and our uh, uh, viewers, uh, Veera Raghav. NASA wanted to launch this long time ago. They did not have the resources, meaning they didn't have the money. They didn't have the moolah to fund this. They went around the world looking for partners. And then when they came to ISRO, ISRO grabbed the opportunity because for us, looking at what is happening on glaciers, looking at what is happening on the coast and for climate change, this is one satellite which is going to be very, very helpful for India and simultaneously for the world. So a partnership between the world's oldest democracy and the world's largest democracy is going to give wonders and save life and human lives on Earth. It's a wonderful satellite and let us hope for a successful launch okay. early next year. 
Right, and as you point out, that collaboration also, lots of learnings for both sides, as uh, the director of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory point out. Everyone's learning in this collaboration. Fascinating, perhaps the first of many. But thanks very much, Pallav Bagla, for sharing those thoughts.